Bobby Allison picks up a NASCAR Cup Series win in 2024 before Kyle Busch. Yeah, I'm sure that put your brain in a pretzel. I'll go on to explain it in a moment. Plus, 2311 Racing responds to NASCAR's response to their request for an injunction. I'll explain that as well. Welcome back to Break Hard. I'm Matt. A rare double episode day, two for Wednesday, which is not a thing and we're not going to try to make it a thing. But as I was editing and posting the first video, NASCAR made a pretty big announcement. If you didn't watch the first video, go watch that. Talked about some fun stuff over there, including the tier rankings, as well as NASCAR and 2311 Racing actually agreeing on something, which is to redact some stuff and some ratings talk. But moving into what this video is about, NASCAR rewrote the record books on Wednesday afternoon when they awarded Bobby Allison, his 85th NASCAR Cup Series victory, despite not being in a race since 1988 at Pocono when his career was cut short following a major accident, Bobby Allison picked up a win on Wednesday, that being the 85th of his career, breaking a tie that he had with Darrell Waltrip and moving him into sole possession of fourth place on the all-time wins list. It now goes from Richard Petty, David Pearson, Jeff Gordon, and now the record books will read Bobby Allison in fourth place by himself. Darrell Waltrip relegated to fifth place overall. I'm sure he's absolutely scouring the record books right now, trying to figure out which race NASCAR took away from him. I don't think he's got a case there, although some people will likely say that he maybe does, but mm, I'm not so sure. In this case, how did Bobby Allison pick up his 85th career win? I'm sure a lot of people are wondering that. Well, we have to take a trip back in time. So try and travel with me back to Bowman Gray Stadium in 1971. 53 years ago, NASCAR ran the Meyer Brothers Memorial 250. In that race, it was a joint race between the NASCAR Grand National Series, which is now known as the Cup Series, and the Grand American Series, which was essentially pony cars. Think of Mustangs, Firebirds, Camaros, Javelins, things like that. Well, in that race, Bobby Allison had entered a Mustang in that race, much to the dismay of Richard Petty and the others in the Grand National cars. They were not happy that these Grand American cars were allowed to race in this race because they felt like those cars were much more nimble. They got around Bowman Gray a lot better, and they got really good fuel mileage, but they went ahead and they raced the two type of cars against each other at Bowman Gray Stadium. And Richard Petty shot out to the lead. He led the first 112 laps of the race and he looked pretty stout, but then he had to pit because, well, he needed fuel. Meanwhile, Bobby Allison and his Mustang never needed to pit. He ran all 250 laps of the race without stopping and proceeded to lead the next 138 laps in route to victory, winning by over three seconds over you guessed it, Richard Petty. Well, after the race, Richard wasn't happy about that. Richard said, quote, they ought to send them home and leave them there. He was not happy that these cars came in and, and stole a win away from him. The Grand American cars, they took eight of the top 10 spots. So there may have been an argument from the Grand National drivers at that point. But NASCAR awards Bobby Allison first place prize money. They give him the trophy. They celebrate it. But then they decide that this race will essentially have no winner in the record books. It, there was a no contest. There was not a winner ever listed in the record books for this race. That was until Wednesday when NASCAR CEO Jim France, along with Mike Helton, went to visit Bobby Allison and officially award him victory from 1971 at Bowman Gray Stadium, thus making him and giving him his 85th career win, making him the fourth winningest driver all time in the NASCAR Cup Series. Now, everybody should be happy about this because if you go back to 1971, they ran two more of these joint style races with the Grand National Cars and the Grand American Cars. Tiny Lund won both of those races and his race wins did not have an asterisk next to them. They counted towards his career total. So it's only fair that Bobby also gets that win counted towards his career total, thus giving him 85 career wins. And Bobby has been adamant about this. I mean, even in his Hall of Fame speech, he said, Scout's honor, I have 85 wins, which he absolutely does. And it makes sense to go ahead and award him this victory because, well, every race has a winner. We shouldn't just have one race not have a winner just because Richard Petty was upset over that. Uh, so Bobby getting that victory is very cool. I'm actually super happy that this happened because now when NASCAR goes back to Bowman Gray Stadium in February, this won't be a talking point. So people are like, oh man, NASCAR's trying to cover up the charter uh, you know, lawsuit by doing something like this. No, not necessarily. They're just kind of taking away a talking point that was 
definitely going to come up when the series returned to Bowman Gray at the beginning of February in 2025. NASCAR CEO Jim France had this to say about awarding Bob Ten his 85th career victory. He said, quote, for 53 years, the Meyer Brothers Memorial was the only race run by NASCAR that did not have an official winner. As we began preparation for the upcoming clash at Bowman Gray Stadium, the topic of the race returned to the forefront. We felt it was the right thing to do to officially recognize Bobby's win and honor him as an 85 time NASCAR Cup Series winner. We are grateful for Bobby's lifetime contributions to NASCAR. So yeah, it is very cool that Bobby Allison gets this recognition. I mean, the man has given so much to the sport. He lost both of his sons in the sport within 12 months of, of each other. He has one of the coolest moments ever in motorsport history, leading home a 1-2 finish in the Daytona 500 with his son, Davey Allison, something that is absolutely remarkable and I don't think gets enough recognition uh, that it should. So Bobby Allison has given so much to the sport. He deserves to be that 85-time winner that he is. I'm excited for him, and I'm excited to see NASCAR get to Bowman Gray Stadium in February. All right, moving into the topic of the 2311 FRM lawsuit real quick. So last week, NASCAR responded to 2311 Racing's injunction by basically saying they've already said they're going to race without charters, you know, regardless. So why are we going to grant them injunction to race with charters? They said they don't need them. That was NASCAR's argument in a very layman's term way. I don't think we need to get super into the weeds. If you want to, there's a video a couple weeks or a couple days back that goes a lot deeper into that. Well, on Wednesday, 2311 Racing responded to, well, NASCAR responding to their request for an injunction saying, quote, defendant's opposition prematurely argues the merits of plaintiff's preliminary injunction, misrepresents the discovery that plaintiffs seek, and like any monopolistic bully, attacks plaintiffs for daring to question their authority. So what 2311 Racing is saying there is that NASCAR is lashing out because 2311 Racing and Front Row Motorsport are questioning their authority by asking for this injunction um, and that they're arguing with the courts that they should get this injunction because NASCAR continues to be a bully, continues to be monopolistic and everything else that they said here. Now, the biggest problem here for 2311 Racing and FRM, in my view, is the fact that they have continually said that they will race without charters. They will race as open cars next season. And that's the argument that NASCAR and their legal team made as well, which I think is a pretty sound argument in this. For lack of a better term, 2311 Racing and Front Row Motorsport should have shut up the entire time. Uh, say less. So in this case, shut up say less, because if you keep saying more, you're giving them more ammunition to use against you. It's not very smart, not very smart at all. But they do have a very good legal team on the team side as well with Jeffrey Kessler and, and his associates. NASCAR has a very good legal team on their side as well. And now it's just kind of a battle of the Titans, Godzilla versus Kong in this situation. We're gonna have to wait and see who comes out on top. I don't think they're going to team up together to create a super movie though. I just don't think that one is happening. So now we wait and decide or wait until the um, injunction hearing on November 4th. Which, I mean, heck, it's going to lead up right into the uh, championship race at Phoenix. So why not? Why not give us more to talk about that week? So let me know in the comments what you think about Bobby Allison getting his 85th career victory on a random Wednesday in 2024, despite not having raced since 1988. What is that? 36 years. Yikes. Um, and then also what you think about 2311 Racing's response to NASCAR's response to their request for an injunction. So like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at Break Hard, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Break Hard Blog.